Hey guys, welcome back to Tony to go find your back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and watching everything that you guys do. Never goes unnoticed. Hope you guys are doing alright and may you stay blessed. Find us on Facebook and Instagram as Funny and Jesse. Head there, say hi, we'll say hi back. Vlogging channel Funny and Jesse 2.0. Subscribe and enjoy the content that we put out. So today I'm going to be reacting to Hindu believes in ultimate power. So does he need to give it a name? So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Click to subscribe believing beings. And press the bell icon to get notified about new videos. Yes, brother, your name and your profession. Uh, my name is Shobit Jain. Sorry? Shobit. Shobit. Yeah. Uh, my question is, uh, I am believing the ultimate power, in the ultimate power. So, is it mandatory to, uh, to give the name? Either uh, I, I will say that uh, it will be a God, it will be Allah, it will be a Bhagwan. The brother asked the question that he believes in the ultimate power, but does he have to give it a name like Allah, God, or Bhagwan? As long as you believe in the ultimate power, the Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse 110. The Quran says, Kulidullah Abidur Rahman Ayyama Tadu Fala Allah Small Usna. Say call upon him by Allah or by Rahman, by whichever name you call upon him. To him belongs the most beautiful name. Whatever name you give to the ultimate power, it should be a beautiful name and it should not conjure up a mental picture. If you give it a name and you degrade it, then we object. If you give it a name and you degrade it, for example, someone who can rest, someone who can lie, someone who makes a human being, uh, someone who makes a mistake, someone who can die. So if you give certain name and certain qualities to God which degrade it, then we take objection. Otherwise, you can call God by any name, but it should be a beautiful name. It should not conjure up a mental picture. And it should be a name given by Almighty God. Like that, there are 99 attributes given to Almighty God in the Quran. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Hakim, Most Gracious, Most Merciful, Most Wise. And the crowning one is Allah. So it is not required that you should give one particular name, but you cannot degrade it by giving it a wrong name. That's very important. And you say ultimate power, that's a name. I believe in ultimate power. No, ultimate power is a name. Correct, right or wrong? Uh, right. So you say ultimate power, someone says Allah, someone says God. Whatever you say, the definition of that ultimate power, or that God, or Allah, should not match that of the human beings. You understand? It should be one. It, it should, should not be two. Yeah. Allah Samad. It should be absolutely eternal. It should not be like Rajnish, which has diabetes mellitus. Correct? Asthama, chronic backache. Huh? He should not beget, nor should be begotten. And there should be nothing like him. That ultimate power cannot be two. It should be one. It should. So whether you call ultimate power, whether you call Allah, whether you call God, it should not conjure up a mental picture and should not go away from the true definition of that entity. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I have one other, another question. Sure. Uh, to start to read Quran, it is mandatory. Uh, how much it important that uh, to believe in either God is exist or not? How much is important to start uh, to read? Well, that's the question. What is mandatory to start reading the Quran? Nothing is mandatory. To read the Quran, you should have a desire to read the Quran. It is not compulsory to read the Quran. You should believe in God and then read the Quran. If you don't believe in God, also you read. Inshallah, you'll start believing. So, for reading Quran, there is nothing mandatory. Only thing, you should have a desire to read. You, you, and when you read, your heart opens up. So that is the beauty of the Quran. The beauty of the Quran, there's nothing mandatory. Not that you should have a beard, not that you should wear a cap, nothing mandatory. 
you are only thing you should ever desire to read and when you read then your heart opens up and you realize the truth if you believe in it then you accept it if the quran what i'm talking about all the thing i gave in the lecture if you start believing you accept it but before reading you don't have to accept anything once you accept it then you agree with it once you agree then you follow the guidance because once what you start believing then you start following if you believe in what you read you believe in mathematics 2 plus 3 is equal to 4 then you agree with it then you start believing in it and then you practice it the same thing in the quran when you read the quran it opens up the mind and you come to know the truth and the reality unlike any other book which is more of a story book fashion written by human beings so that is the beauty of the quran it is the most positive book in the world it is a proclamation for humanity it is a fountain of mercy and wisdom it is a warning to the heedless it's a guide to the erring it's the assurance to those in doubt it's a solace to the suffering and a hope to those in despair this is the beauty of the quran thank you thank you so much uh, i asked to ma many people this question but right now i got the correct answer there is no foundation Thank the you. people Thank you will so tell you, you should be in wudu, you should be in this. That is afterwards. That is once you start respecting, you start doing other things. There is no requirement as long as you read and you come to the true path because the Quran is a book of guidance to humanity. Okay. Have you Thank read the Quran, brother? Have you read the Quran? Uh, something, sometimes. Partly. Yep. Brother, do you believe that there is one God? Yeah, I what believe... you call it is different. But yeah. you believe there is one God? I believe in a one God. Brother, do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? <laughs> Not till now. Not till now. Yeah. And I believe you are coming from a Hindu background. Uh, yeah, sometimes. Means, <laughs> you can say. Because uh, I believe in Hinduism also, Buddhism also. I read the many things from many different, different religions. So, that's the thing only. If you read the Hindu scriptures, it is mentioned in Hindu scripture in more than 100 places the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. More than 100 places. If you read Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adheta 3, Shloka number 5 to 8, it talks about Prophet Muhammad. If you read Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adheta 3, Shloka number 10 to 27, it talks about Muhammad. If you read the Kunta Sukta, Atharva Ved, book number 20, and if you read book number 20, Atharva Ved, uh, hymn number 127, shlok number 1 to 14, it talks about Narashansa, it talks about Muhammad. There are more than 100 places in the Hindu scriptures that talks about Muhammad. I'll just give you a detail of one. If you read the Kalki Purana, Kalki Purana, which is mentioned in, in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, Verse number 5, verse number 7, verse number 11, verse number 15. It says that there is a Kalki avatar to come whose father's name will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu means God, Yas means servant. Vishnu Yas means servant of God. In Arabic it is Abdullah, which was the name of the father of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says he will, born, he will be born to a woman in the womb of Sumati. Sumati means serenity and peace. In Arabic, it's Amina, which was the name of the mother of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says he will be born in a village by the name of Sambala, peace, that is Makkah. He'll be born in the house of the chief of the village of Sambala, chief of Makkah, which is the Quraysh family, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born from the Quraysh family. It says he will get the first revelation in a cave, which we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gone Gare Hira. He will... He, when he gets the revelation, he'll get at night time. And we know that it's mentioned in the Quran. Furthermore, it says that he will migrate northwards and come back. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated northwards to Medina and came back. It says he'll have four companions, that's the fourth for Khulfa Rashidin. There are minute details mentioned about the last and final messenger, that is Kalki Otar in the Hindu scriptures. So if you read the Hindu scriptures, any almost the scripture of all the major world religion whether it be buddhist scripture whether it be old testament whether it be new testament whether it be the hindu scripture whether it be the parsi scripture all these scriptures even though they have been changed yet there is mention of one god in all these scriptures 
also mention of the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. My request to you brother is that you read and do research on this and I pray to Almighty God that may you open your heart and may he guide you. Definitely, I will do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. is going on and I don't know if this was just for one day uh, people still decided you know to come speak to Dr. Zaki Naik and um, that speaks volumes if you whether you're watching the match or whether you're here you know it's still up to you but um, some good questions were asked because many people will tell you that if you're not for example if you don't spell God with a small g then you're talking about something else if you don't call God by the name God then it's not God that you're speaking with, you're praying to, you know. It's good to hear, um, to get an answer that's actually very, very neutral, you know. As long as it's not a name that's putting God down, degrading him, insulting him, then it's okay to call God whatever you wish. And um, his second question concerning reading the Quran, if you don't follow it, the religion itself or don't believe in it or whatever it is it's actually i feel like sometimes you have to try something for you to find out about about it how are you going to know you like oranges if you haven't tested oranges how is it that you're going to know that you can relate to those people if you've never spoken to them how can you say um i don't understand and all that language if you haven't tried learning it you know or culture whatever it is you can we can use different examples for this one but it's up to us to say you know what let me try this maybe islam is what you'll find at the end of the day he said he's reading things from different religions who knows why his path will lead him you know uh, there's always a start to something and th there's always an ending to a story so i don't know if he converted in this thing I'm not sure because he actually asked his last question and left. Otherwise, it's good that we're teaching ourselves without anyone pushing us about other religions. It's very, very important in life. Let me know what you guys actually think. If there's anything you want me to react to, let me know down below. Just give me a name or the link and I'll be sure to check it out. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.